If you've ever used an ATEM switcher from Blackmagic Design, then you've probably already used the ATEM software control. But sometimes clicking buttons with a mouse just isn't fast enough. So when the minis and the extremes came out, it was a welcome change of pace for smaller shows. But for a bigger event using the Constellation switchers, that's where a physical panel can make a huge difference. In the past, when I've used Constellation switchers, I used the 1ME Advanced Panel, and it's awesome for what it does. But now, there's a new sheriff in town for quick and easy show switching. This? It's the new ATEM Micro Panel, and it's designed to replicate the software interface in a compact and physical form factor. You're getting high-end broadcast buttons, just like you'd find on the larger ATEM Advanced panels, along with all the core controls that you'd expect. Program and preview rows, upstream and downstream keyers, a fader bar, and even access to your favorite macros. And if you think this panel is only for beginner switchers, well, think again. This thing can handle up to a 4ME switcher. So whether you're using an ATEM Mini or 4ME Constellation, this panel has a place in your workflow. It's worth mentioning that from a price standpoint, while this won't have all the buttons that a 1ME or even a 4ME panel have, it costs less than $1,000. The 1ME panel is over $3,000, the 2ME panel is over $7,000, and the 4ME panel, well, it's over $21,000. So you can see where maybe having a few of these reduces the crater size dent in your wallet. On the panel, you've got a USB-C connection for plugging it directly into your laptop that's running the ATEM software control. And this can of course recharge the battery, but you can also connect wirelessly via Bluetooth. There's a large internal battery that lets you run the panel for hours on a single charge. There's even a physical power switch on the back, so you're not draining the battery when you toss it in a backpack between gigs. I've been using mine with my ATEM SDI Extreme ISO just for the purposes of this demonstration, and what I really appreciate is how tactile it feels. My hands naturally fall into the same position as they would on the 1ME panel. Let's walk through what you actually get here. There's one mix effect row with 10 input buttons, which doubles to 20 sources when using the shift function. Keep in mind that since the switcher I'm connected to only has eight inputs, I'll only be able to use one through eight. So this isn't going to add any more inputs than what my switcher currently has. You've got four upstream key buttons, two downstream key buttons, a preview transition button, and 4ME select buttons. That means that even if you're running a big 4ME setup, you can still control it all from this small panel. Although I think you'll find it challenging to get to an input beyond number 20. For transitions, you get the standard cut and auto buttons, but also dip, DVE, sting, mix, and wipe transition types right at your fingertips. There's a low profile transition fader as well, which feels great in the hand, and it gives you smooth manual control when you want it, and I'd argue it's one of the things that's missing from the regular A10 Mini and Extreme switchers. Now let me show you real fast how easy it is to connect the micro panel to my setup and a few settings. For demonstration purposes, I've got my ATEM SDI Extreme ISO, and then I have the brand new ATEM micro panel. Keep in mind that this panel can be used with any of the ATEMs for switching. You're just going to be limited to the buttons here. So if you have a smaller ATEM that only had four inputs, you would be able to use buttons one through four for those inputs. And again, since this is an eight input switcher, I can use one through eight. There's a cool thing I'll show you in the settings in just a moment where we can actually map nine and 10 to do other stuff. So let me show you how I got this all connected. For starters, the ATEM micro panel can connect to the computer over Bluetooth or through USB-C. So just to explain my cable pass here, right now there's a USB-C cable that's coming out of the ATEM micro panel and it's connecting into my laptop right there. Then I've also got my ATEM SDI Extreme ISO. It's currently powered, so that's one of the cables. And then it has a USB-C connection that's going straight to the laptop right there. All right, let's jump into the ATEM software. And one thing you wanna know is that it's the ATEM setup that you wanna to touch. It's not the ATEM software control. That still will have to be opened, but just for the purposes of connecting the ATEM micro panel to the computer, the ATEM setup is what you need. 
Now, if you're like me and you open up the ATEM setup and you realize that it's not connecting or talking to the panel, there's a good chance that you need to go to Blackmagic's support page and download a brand new version. For me, I believe it was 10.1 of the ATEM software control. So if you're doing that, you simply head on over to your favorite web browser and then navigate to blackmagicdesign.com. And then on their support page, click on the ATEM production switchers. And right down here, you'll see the new ATEM switchers 10.1 update. Now keep in mind, that's the update that you need for both the ATEM and the ATEM micro panel. It's the same software that you'll need. Once you have that downloaded and installed, it will alert you if there is an update available for the panel. So in my case, there was actually a firmware update for the ATEM micro panel, and I ran it all from the ATEM setup application. Now you can see this is connected right away, so it was fairly easy. Let me go ahead and disconnect our USB-C cable and you'll see instantly I lose that connection. Now one thing that you could do is you could actually go into your, your system settings, click on Bluetooth, and then you can connect to the ATEM micro panel over Bluetooth that way. All you do is flip it over and on the top side there is a Bluetooth pairing button that you would push. It'll light up blue and then you can hit connect from here. So I could connect that way, and you can see it's already connected to my devices in my list right there, or I could connect using the USB-C cable. For now, I'm just going to plug the USB-C cable back in since we want to have this guy charging and make sure that we're getting enough battery on this panel. So right here in the ATEM setup, you're seeing my ATEM SDI Extreme ISO. I plugged the micro panel back in, but nothing popped up. Well, all you have to do is hit this arrow right over here and arrow over to the other device. So this ATEM setup application, it's going to discover all of the ATEM devices that are connected to this computer. So in my case, it's seeing both of these devices. Now, when you go into the menu options by clicking this button, there's a few controls that you can change. For starters, I need to tell it which switcher I want to control. So you can see here we've got the ATEM Mini Pro all the way up to the ATEM 4ME Constellation, the ATEM Constellation 8K. There's so many different switcher models, but you want to tell it which switcher you're actually controlling so that it configures it properly. So in my case, I have the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO, so I'll select that. And then I can go into my button mapping. So you'll see down here, remember I was saying earlier that I only have eight inputs on my ATEM SDI Extreme ISO, but there's 10 buttons on the ATEM micro panel. This is where we can adjust that. So you'll see here, I've got it configured so that buttons one through eight are controlling cameras one through eight. You can see this this way. If I just put them in a program, notice how these are going active as soon as I select the buttons over here. Right, so very easy, very simple. And if you're using a preview program switcher, then of course you can put them into preview this way. So I'm gonna put four into preview. And even if I don't have the switcher set up to do that right here, all I have to do is press cut and you'll see camera four becomes active. Now camera one is in preview and I could do auto if I want it to fade and it will fade back to one. And now one is active. Same thing goes for the fader bar. So you've got the fader bar right here and you can do it just like so. And you'll notice that as I switch it on the ATEM micro panel, the same exact changes are happening on the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO. What I do really enjoy here though, is that because I have these extra buttons, right now I've got button nine mapped to media player one, and I've got button 10 mapped to media player two but I could set these to be anything else. What's nice about this is that if I had maybe an intro or an opening slide in Media Player 1 on 9, I can put 9 into program. So now 9 is live and I'm holding on my intro slide. And then when it's time to start my live stream, assuming that camera 1 or input 1 is the first camera I'd like to go to, I can simply start the show from there. So that's really nice is it's making up for the fact that it doesn't have a function for button nine and 10, we're assigning a new function to those buttons. And there's a whole lot more you can do there. So you can assign uh, your color bars, colors one or two, media player one or media player two, or even super source to these buttons. So if I select super source for button number 10, and then I hit save, right? And I've saved my changes to the panel. Then when I put 10 into preview and I hit cut, 
it will take Super Source Active, which you can see it translates right over to my ATEM SDI Extreme ISO, and now Super Source is active. When I want to go back to camera, let's say four, and I hit cut, I am back to camera four, and then you can see right over here, the same exact thing has translated over. So that's a really quick and easy way to leverage these extra buttons on the ATEM micro panel. Just know that if you have an ATEM mini or one of the ATEMs that doesn't have a super source, you of course won't gain that feature just because it's something you can map to the button here. It will map what it's capable of within the switcher itself. But I want you to see this ATEM micro panel as an extension of using the ATEM software control. So it's almost like a wireless keyboard if you unplug this and go Bluetooth only to the ATEM software control. That's how the mapping works. Now, one thing to remember too, is you can actually map some things to the shift keys here as well. So if I have, let's say, uh, I'm gonna place button 10 back to media player two for right now. Let's just put one and one in preview and program just so we're all reset. I'll go into my settings here. And now with the shift, I have the ability to set other things. So for whatever reason, let's say you've got a bigger switcher like the Constellation switchers, that's where your shift key right here, when you hold this down, you're going to get a whole new row of buttons. So you could set button one to be camera 11, button two to be camera 12, and so on down the line just by holding shift. You can also double tap the shift button, which will lock it into place. And now this would essentially be cameras 11 through 20. So know that you can control and map the shift key to anything that you want right here. So your, your shift level of buttons will be changed to anything that your switcher is capable of. So again, it's going to be what the switcher can do. It's not going to add additional features. This is just a secondary controller. Additionally, in the setup, you can also go to the setup page, and this is where you can name the micro panel, you can check the software version, and you can set it, whether it's program and preview switching mode, or you can do the AB direct switching mode. So if I switch this to AB direct and I hit save, then you'll notice that as I cut my program right here, it's cutting at the same time over here on the ATEM. One last and final note is in this ATEM micro panel setup application, you can also adjust the brightness of the LEDs. So if you work in a darker environment, sometimes these LED lights can get a little bit bright. I've got controls right here to change the brightness. So that's all the way down to 1%, just so you can get a better idea of the brightness. And this is all the way up to 100%. So the micro panel is super easy to use. You just need to make sure that you have this ATEM software control up and open because as you will see, when I switch here, it's switching in the software control and the software control is what's talking to the SDI Extreme ISO and telling it exactly what to do. Now, I do love on this panel that we have access to ME1, ME2, ME3, and ME4. So if you're on the bigger switchers, like the ATEM Constellation 2ME or 4ME, you have the ability to switch between your ME's from right here. These are not going to be active right now since I'm using a switcher that doesn't have second ME or a third ME. But I do love that we also have access to all of our keyers. So we have our four upstream keyers right here. We have our two downstream keyers right here, our cut and auto buttons, the shift. And of course, you have the ability to take macros. So if you had programmed in a macro, like let's say real quick, I'm going to build a macro. And let me just delete a couple old ones that I had. So I'm going to remove these from here. I'm going to add a macro. I'm just going to call this test for right now. And let's say I'm recording my macro and I want it to take this microphone off. So maybe take mic one off and I want it to cut to camera three, right? I've recorded that macro. I'm going to stop my recording. Now, instead of needing to run the macros from here or from the ATEM, keep in mind you do have your macro buttons one through six, you're going to get more macro controls over here actually. So I'm gonna put this mic back on, I'm gonna jump to a different camera, and if we wanna activate that macro, all I need to do is press the macro button that's on the ATEM micro panel, so it's right up here. And now all these blue lights light up right here. And since I have a macro one, as soon as I press this, it should turn my mic one audio off and switch me to camera input three. Ready and go. 
and you can see it instantly did that. So that's what I like about this the most too, is you're gaining macros over the six that you have available on the extreme ISO. You're also gaining access to macros for all of your constellation switchers and everything else. So really nice and easy. I love having access to all of that right here on this panel. And of course you could place this anywhere else within your tech setup. So it doesn't have to be right here. If you've got this switcher stuck on a different table, you can take this guy two tables down and still control your switcher as long as the ATEM software control is open. I wanna call out a specific button that is not on this panel though. And to be honest, I'm actually glad that it isn't. And that's the fade to black button. As you may know, it's easy to accidentally press fade to black and you won't find it here. If you really needed it, you could record it as a macro or just as easily switch to one of your empty inputs into preview and then use the auto button or the fader bar to fade out. Now I will say that this isn't a replacement for a full broadcast panel with joystick controls, the LED displays, and tons of routing options, but that's not what it's meant to be. This is for the live streamer, the event tech, or corporate AV pro who's already deep in the Blackmagic ecosystem and just wants a fast physical way to switch. I've also seen some people build out fly packs with the 1ME and 2ME switcher, and this could be an easier way to travel and not need the 1ME advanced panel. If you're running a dual operator setup, or you want to station a second operator at another desk, you can also run multiple ATEM micro panels at one time, which opens up all kinds of creative possibilities. The only thing that I wish it had was the customizable LED displays above the buttons, but that probably would make the panel way more expensive and would kill the battery life. So to that point, just grab yourself the 1ME Advanced panel because it's a great feature to have if that's what you need in your setup. So who's it for? If you've ever fumbled with mouse clicks trying to switch cameras mid-show while using a 1ME or even a 2ME without a panel, or simply want to locate the switching elements somewhere else in your tech setup, this is for you. If you're running shows on the go and want something that's really lightweight and powerful, this is also for you. I've got a link to the panel down below in that description, so if you want to learn a little bit more or you're just looking to get one, it's right down there for you. I hope you enjoyed this rundown of the ATEM micro panel, and well, we'll see you next time.